knows me, um, I'm a storyteller, so um, my presentation um, is a story. I'm going to begin with a story for you. Um, what am I using here? The arrow? No. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you today to Matt Airways. This is our pilot, Mr. Brawl. Matt, I'd like to let you know that Mr. Brawl's pilot rating is a B. So you should feel safe and sound and comfortable as Mr. Bra flies you across the country to reach your destination. So sit back and enjoy your ride. How confident are you about getting on the airplane with Al? Feeling good? Well, I don't know if his overall rating is the best way to tell you what you're getting on your flight. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Al's great book, if you will, to show you a little bit more about Al's skills as a pilot. All right. So as you can see here, Al's meeting attendance, 100%. He comes to every meeting. He's always there. Never misses. His preparation, 100%. Of course, you know what that means. That means every time Al's at a meeting, he raises his hand. You make note that Al raises his hand, and you give him participation points for participating in your meeting. Yes, good job, Al. Yeah, way to go. All right. <laughs> when it comes to completing and turning in paperwork, he does it every single day. No exceptions. He has paperwork. He turns it into you every day. Now, the fact that that paperwork has mistakes in it doesn't matter. He's turning it in every day. It looks good. I'm giving him a perfect score because he's doing it every day, and he's turning it in. All right? So his overall compliance, you'll see that I've given this a compliance rating because that's what I think this is. This is just this whole thing about are you doing what I ask you to do every day? And he is. So you'll see that Al's compliance rating is a perfect 100%. Feeling good about Al? His compliance rating is 100%. I'm feeling good. All right, I'm going to give you a moment to take a look at this next slide when you talk about Al. <laughs> How you feeling? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, I'm not sure I'm getting on the plane. Well, actually, if I get on the plane, I don't know if we'll get off the ground. Because he's only 59% of the ground. And God forbid we actually get off the ground. Well, eventually you'll reach the ground. I'm just not quite sure how you're going to reach the ground with this 52% rating. So. His performance rating is only a 70% if you look at weight those all equally. So if you take his 100% compliance rating and weight that at 30%, that's a pretty typical thing I hear that teachers do, right? 30% for your compliance, 70% for your performance. Al's overall rating is a 79%. Now, you might be scratching your head back there going, um, well, you're supposed to be a math teacher. I thought you said Al's rating was a B. 79 in most classrooms is not a B, right? That's okay. I've done some things to help Al out, you know? We at Mav Airways have decided to give Al some extra credits because he's close, but he's not quite there. So Gary alluded to this just a moment ago. There are some opportunities we offered Al for extra credit. You see those up there? Right, you see them up there? Nicole likes Al because he's bringing treats every Friday. You were commenting on that, weren't you? I just know. All right. And, and, and he never took a bathroom break because, you know, of course we have those teachers out there that give you three bathroom passes and if you don't forget, don't use those all during the term. You can turn those in for extra credits. <laughs> you have great bladder control. Congratulations. <laughs> extra credits. So when we take his 100% compliance rating, his 70% ability on the job, which I don't think you'd want to fly with him, and his extra credit he now has an overall rating of 81%. He is a B pilot. Congratulations. You should feel fabulous about flying with Al on the airplane. Now, that seems kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? I think it's funny that when we talk about this, this example, you look at this and you're like, that's just ridiculous. But isn't that what we're doing every day in classrooms? This is the kind of stuff that I think we're doing. We're just kind of shying away from it. So, you know, when I look at grades, and I want to try to assess what the grade says about a student, I don't really know. What does a grade of B mean for a kid? Can I have a kid, wait, let me say that differently. You can have a kid who's got a B, because they do all the compliance stuff and can't do any of the skill stuff. And they're a B. You can have a kid that can ace everything you want them to do and hates the compliance work. They don't want to do the homework because they don't need to do the homework. They get 100 on every test. 
honored on every test and they're frustrated because they're getting a B because they're not doing that stuff you want them to do every day. But I thought the goal here was knowledge. The goal was to prove that you know what you're doing. And we have kids on both ends of that spectrum. So we talk about this diversity in our classrooms. The reality is we're creating that diversity just as much. We're creating kids that come into your class next year. And you're looking and going, oh, B, oh, that should be great. And they can't do anything. And you're like, why can't they do anything? They've got to be. Well, that's because I'm not sure that we're really looking at the grade in terms of what it means. So that kind of leads to this whole idea about what standards-based grading to me is really about. Um, it's this idea where we're trying to gauge and base students on their skills. And, and the thing is that when I look at grade books and look at how the grades are assessed, you know, I've had this great opportunity in the last couple of years where we had students that are trying to get on the remediation track and the administrators have looked at my grade book and they're really happy because they know exactly what things kids can and can't do. And when they look at other people's grade books, they have no idea what the kids can or can't do. And they're really confusing to boot. So let's take a look at some things that um, uh, could look like your grade book. All right? Oh, first off, sorry, I'm kind of out of order here. So again, the whole point of what we're doing, is, as Gary alluded to, is this is all about assessments. And from what you've heard today, from all the presentations, I think it's kind of cool that I get to go last after you've heard all these great things, is I think there's so many ways that you can assess kids. This is the way everyone does it right here. This is the way everyone does it. And I think that's coined by the wayside. I, I think we need to start thinking about other ways that kids can show their knowledge by giving presentations, whether they do it with groups or whether they do it on their own. I, I think this is one of the most powerful. I think you've heard this over and over again about this idea of sitting and having one-on-one -on -one conversations and making videos here. We're talking about all those great things. And I didn't listen to any of these presentations before time, so I think that's really cool that you guys have brought all those things um, to boot. So if you were to look at my gradebook for an Algebra 1 student, it would look something like this. It would have those targets, kind of similar to what Gary was just talking about. It would have those target things that we have in there, and then it would have some kind of score next to those targets. Now, again, this to me is incredibly meaningful when I want to talk about what it is a kid can and can't do in my Algebra class. If he can't solve linear equations, I know where that's going to lead to downfalls in other places. And again, looking at a B, I don't know what a B means. But when I look at this, I'm like, God, if I've got to do anything that revolves around linear equations, this kid needs some remediation. He's clearly not there. He's clearly not ready. Now, contrast to what, to what you see with a normal grade book that looks like this. This is what a lot of grade books look like. What does that tell you? I, I mean, you can say, well, let me tell you what it is. But someone couldn't look at my grade book and decide what it is that kids can and can't do. They can't tell me. All right, so um, I'm trying to stay on my five minute time. So I just want you to think about what it is that you want your grades to reflect, okay? I, I hear this argument all the time from teachers, oh, I'm trying to teach work ethic. Uh, I don't know that my job is to teach work ethic. I thought my job was to teach math. I thought my job was to get kids skilled in math. You know, things like what, what Matt was talking about. I want kids thinking and wondering about math. I want kids being skilled at math. I don't want kids just being and doing all this compliance work. All right, I think we're just doing them a lot of harm. The real question I want you to ask is, which one of the pilots do you want to fly with? Which one of these two guys, I like that picture on your favorite ones, that do you want to fly with? And I think that this idea of grading to try to get us to make these kind of performances outweighs 